What's up my comic comrades? Today we're taking a look at the tactical leader of the Eternals, Icarus. He's easily the team's Superman and most known member. So today we're going to take a closer look at what the character is all about, just as he makes his MCU debut. Our sister show Film Ride also just released an episode on Icarus and the effects used to create his version of Heat Vision as seen in the trailers. So definitely jump over to the Film Riot channel and check that out too. You can find it right here. But now let's dive into the comic book origins of Icarus. Icarus first appeared in the Eternals issue 1 in July of 1976, and like all the Eternals, he was created by the one and only Jack the King Kirby. Now, if you watched our History of the Eternals episode, you already know how the Eternals came to be. If you haven't seen that episode, you could watch that right here. As for Icarus himself, he was born over 20,000 years ago, and his real birth name is unknown. He's part of the Eternals race, which is an offshoot of humanity that was created by the Celestials. The Eternals are basically what humans would be if we were gods. Anyway, around 18,500 BC, the second host of the Celestials destroyed such cities as Atlantis, sinking it to the bottom of the ocean. That's right, in the Marvel Universe, the Celestials are responsible for the lost city of Atlantis. But Icarus, being the good guy he is, was like, yeah, I can't let the humans die. So he guided an arc of refugee humans to safety by flying above the Celestials and watching for their attacks. However, all the humans aboard the ark thought that Icarus was a bird, which eventually led to the folklore tale of him being the dove that led Noah and his ark to the mountains of Ararat. Now, around this time, we find out that a Celestial committed an unknown crime while on Earth. And apparently, trying to destroy human civilization wasn't part of that crime. It was something else, so go figure. Because of this, the Celestial was punished by having all of its life essence or life energies released from its armor. At this point, said Celestial was forced into a deep sleep and buried by its fellow Celestials. The Celestial ultimately became known as the Dreaming Celestial. Now, this is the crazy part and why I'm bringing it up, because the weapon they used to disperse the Celestial and get rid of its life essence, if you will, was put inside or entombed within the Pyramid of the Four Winds, which is an Arctic facility built by Icarus's father, Varako. Because of this, Icarus is one of the very few who know what this pyramid contains, which is clearly one of the most powerful weapons in the universe as it was able to get rid of a celestial. Now, as most of you know by now, if you've watched any of our previous Eternals or Deviants episodes, Icarus and the Eternals would constantly battle with their enemies, the Deviants, who are a monstrous creature-like race that was also created by the Celestials. Now, like I mentioned briefly earlier, Icarus is the tactical leader of the Eternals, and as their leader in the field, the rest of the Eternals thought of him as a bit headstrong. And that's just putting it the nice way, but his inner circle always stood by him as his closest group of friends, which are the speedster Mercury, the Hindu Cersei and Thena, the daughter of Zerus, who is the true ruler of the Eternals, basically like their king. His name is literally a play on Zeus for a reason. Now, you all know I'm a massive fan of comics explaining little parts of characters' backstory, like how Spider-Man's web shooters work, who taught Batman that disappearing trick he always does on Gordon, and so on and so forth. Basically, I love when writers go back and tell us the origin of little yet very important things about characters. So in the case of Icarus, we're going to talk about how he got the name Icarus because it's just kind of cool. Like a lot of things in comics, it's set around tragedy. You see, Icarus chose his name due to a tragic accident that happened to him hundreds of of years ago. When Icarus was fighting the Deviants, he met a human woman in ancient Greece. The two fell in love and had a son named Icarus. Unfortunately for Icarus, he didn't gain the full power of an Eternal like his dad. But what Icarus loved to do with his father the most was fly above the seas and mountains of Greece. Over time, Macri and the Eternals built young Icarus mechanical wings so he would be able to fly alone. Sometime after this, when his father went off to fight the Deviants again, young Icarus went out to find his dad using his mechanical wings. The problem was he wasn't that good at using them yet and flew so high he lost consciousness in the upper atmosphere, which caused him to pass out and fall to his death. Later on, his father would find his son dead and take his son's name as a memorial and reminder of his beloved son. See, I told you how Icarus got his name was tragic, and that's pretty much as tragic as it gets. Now, before we move on to powers and abilities, because Icarus is easily one of the most powerful Eternals, let's talk about the 2006 Eternals miniseries, which seems to be what the new Eternals movie is going to heavily be pulling from. In the 2006 series written by Neil Gaiman and artist John Romita Jr., we learned that the Eternals were on the receiving end of a reality and memory manipulation that was done by one of their own former Eternal, Sprite. All of which led to the Eternals losing their memories, forgetting their true identities. In issue one of the series, we see that Macri is now a doctor going by Mark Curry, and Icarus becomes one of his patients after sustaining injuries from an explosion. But he's healing pretty quickly because he's an Eternal. Anyway, at this point, Icarus remembers most of his past and starts telling Mark Curry his Eternal origin, which gives us the modern origin of the Eternals. But it's funny because he's also telling Mark Curry how he came to be as he's the Eternal Macri, but he just doesn't know it yet. Long story short, Icarus was captured and almost destroyed by two Deviant agents, as they literally atomized his body all Dr. Manhattan style. But his body reforms and reappears with all of his powers fully restored, as well as his memories, at which point he sets out to awaken his fellow Eternals by helping them remember their true identities. Of course, by the end of the series, he's able to awaken several of his closest Eternal friends, such as Ajax, Thena, Cersei, 
Macri, and more. But of course, he doesn't want to stop there. He also wants to reawaken the other 90 or so Eternals left. Now, before moving on to powers and abilities, it's also worth mentioning that in the early centuries of the Eternals, Icarus and the Eternals would come into conflict with the first mutant, Apocalypse. A feud that ended with Icarus and the Eternals defeating Apocalypse and believing him to be dead. I only bring this up because we know that the Eternals movie is going to heavily take place in the past. If memory serves me correctly, I believe I heard Marvel say 60% of the movie will take place in the past and 40% of it will take place in the present. And we know the MCU is going to be introducing the X-Men very soon. So it's possible that we might get a hint to Apocalypse in this movie, which would be a nice little Easter egg and set up for the mutants future in the MCU. So let's see if that happens. But now it's time to take a look at Icarus's powers and abilities. Like all the Eternals, his life force is augmented by cosmic energy, which gives him total mental control over every single molecule of his physical form and bodily processes at all times, even when he's unconscious or asleep. Some of his powers include superhuman strength. The dude can lift 100 plus tons without using his flight ability to supplement his strength, aka give him leverage. Now, while all Eternals have superhuman strength, his is way higher than the majority of his species. It's been said in the comics that his physical strength can rival that of Thor. And judging by the trailer, it looks like they're setting out to make it the MCU Superman. I mean, come on, they straight up even used Snyder's Man of Steel Superman punch. You guys know what I'm talking about. Anyway, the cosmic energy that flows through Icarus also makes him immune to all earthly diseases. He also has an amazing healing factor. If he's injured, he's able to regenerate any broken or missing tissue. Although depending on how severe it is, the longer it's gonna take. The only way Icarus or any Eternal for that matter can die is through an injury that disperses a huge amount of his body's molecules. But even sometimes they still come back to life like Icarus did in the 2006 miniseries that I talked about earlier. What we're saying is, is that it's very hard to kill an Eternal. They are gods essentially. Icarus can also scan the superficial thoughts of any mind less adept than his own, meaning all humans and some superhumans. Icarus is also able to sonically manipulate atoms and molecules to transform an object shape. He can also rearrange molecules in the air to create an almost impervious shield around him. And like we saw in the trailers, Icarus can shoot cosmic energy in the form of beams from his eyes and hands. Essentially what I'm saying is there's almost nothing Icarus can't do. Again, he's a god created by other gods, the Celestials. But with that said, let's dive into some reading recommendations. Check out the original 1970s Jack Kirby Eternal series, the 1980s Eternal series, the 2006 series, the 2008 series, and the brand new 2021 Eternals ongoing series. I think that's more than enough to get you all started. And that's gonna bring today's episode of Variant to a close, but if you enjoyed today's content, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our videos, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. It always helps the channel grow. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.